Welcome back to Talking Dragon Age, the show where I talk about Dragon Age. Continuing our discussion of Ancient Venter, today we're talking about the official foundation of the Imperium. Originally, the Neromenian tribes occupied this area around the Notion Sea. They eventually split off into four kingdoms. Neromenian, who I assume are the most traditional of the kingdoms, Berendur, which appears to have been more of a city-state, uh, Carinus, which also may have been a city-state, uh, by the way, it's Corinus, not Canari, just in case anyone was confused by that, which nobody was. And to Vinter, which seems to have been about as large as Naromenia. They split from one another in negative 1700 ancient, so like 2500 years before the Dragon Age. About 90 years in, in negative 1610, Berendur completely vanished. At the time, it was attributed to them displeasing the old god Dumat. More likely, it was just a volcano, as Solas claims he found it buried in volcanic ash. Where exactly on the map this occurred, we don't know. My first thought was the volcano was the White Spire, but Tevinter hadn't yet spread that far east, and I'll talk about that next time. By the way, this White Spire is not to be confused with the Circle in Val Royo, yet another item that deserved a renaming way more than Carinus. I guess someone on the development team just really liked the name The White Spire. Same way they love to use the word one. So we don't know where Berendur was exactly. Uh, we'll probably find out in the next game. It was in negative 1595 that the worship of the old gods really took off, when the Blood Mage and Dreamer Thalcyon claimed the throne of Naromenian and built a bunch of temples to them. Around the years negative 1207 and negative 1195, the first Archon, Derenius, united the kingdoms. Derenius was born to Queen Livia of the kingdom of Deventer. In addition to being queen, she was also the high priestess of Razakale. That's not important to the story, but I think that's cool because the queen's patron deity was the goddess of mystery. Suck it, Demot! Praise be to Razakale! Queen Livia also had a brother named Tarsian that wanted the throne. Not to be confused with Thalcyon, the first human dreamer, or Thalassian, a later Archon. This is Tarsian. Also not to be confused with Canari. See, it also has an A, an N, an R, and an I in it, so, you know, you can see why someone may get them confused. The following reads like it's very fictionalized, but is probably at least based in the truth. So take it all with a grain of salt. Queen Livia's brother Tarsian wanted the throne though he was not a mage, so he knew he couldn't truly challenge her. But when she gave birth to her son, Tarsian saw his opening and attacked, slaughtering priests and soldiers that would not swear allegiance to him. When he reached the queen's bedchamber, he found it empty except for the royal signet ring broken with half missing. And as we all know, kingship is not official if you don't have the whole royal ring. Tarsian quickly tracked his sister to the Temple of Razakale, where she, after just having given birth to her son, was fully adorned in armor and ready for battle. She and Tarsian fought. Tarsian lost his right eye and right arm, but Queen Livia lost her life. Her newborn son was found in a basket by a priestess of Dumat named Calpurnia, not that one, along with the second half of the royal signet ring. The priestess raised him as her own and named him Derenius. I think he was raised in Neromenian, not Deventer. The text is unclear, but that's definitely the implication. As a child, Derenius was a prodigy. He could manipulate the Fade as easily and skillfully as dreamers with decades of experience. He was also able to charm animals and would often be seen surrounded by cats and birds that he employed as spies. This was apparently so effective that many believed he could foresee the future. At age 19, the High Priest of Dumont was dying and called all his acolytes to say Dumont had spoken to him, saying his successor would bring him something that has no legs but must dance, has no lungs but must breathe, and has no life but lives and dies. The other acolytes whispered the priest was mad, but Derenius, still considered a novice at the temple, cast a spell to summon fire into a brazier and carried it to the dying High Priest, who then named him his successor. Later, the High King of Naromenian died without an heir, so his successor had to be chosen from the Dreamers. So they called up the High Priests of Dumat, Toth, and Lusican, the three patron gods of Naromenian. They would be presented with a challenge to see who was most blessed by the gods. They each had until sunrise to tie an egg in a knot and place it on a pedestal before the throne. 
The pedestal was enchanted, so only the correct solution to the puzzle would be accepted, and then the crown would be released from the vault. I don't know why they didn't just have a judge, but I guess it wouldn't be Tevinter or proto Tevinter if they did it the easy way. And if none of the priests could do it, they would be put to death and their successors would come to face the challenge. I don't know who was administering this test. It feels like maybe they could claim the throne if they wanted it. I mean, how are they planning to put three dreamers to death unless they too are dreamers and or have a bunch of loyal forces? This whole situation is weird to me. Well, the priests of Lusican and Toth go to the Fade to look for a solution, while Darinius smashed the egg, ripped off a piece of cloth, and soaked that in the egg, and then tied it, and presented it on the pedestal. Apparently, the bell that rang as he presented the correct solution woke all of Naramenian. Now, I'll be honest. When I first read this challenge to tie an egg in a knot, I was imagining this. I was thinking, it may be kind of tricky, but it's not that big of a deal. But no, they meant the inside of the egg. So I totally would have presented this and probably have been put to death, even though no one could say I failed to complete the challenge. This is an egg tied in a knot. Also, this is surprisingly hard to do by yourself. By the way, I think this is how we should choose leaders in real life. Give them really weird puzzles they have to think outside the box to solve, because those are the people that are going to get things done. On the evening of his coronation, Derenius' adopted mother presented him with the half of the signet ring she found him with as a baby, and that he was adopted. So, yeah, big big day for Derenius. The war chief recognized the signet ring as the royal seal of Tevinter. Derenius was now faced with a problem. If he was heir to the Tevinter throne, he was honor-bound to avenge his mother's murder and reclaim it. To not do so was believed to be seen as shameful by the gods, and his family would be cursed. But Tarsian was well fortified in Minrathus. Derenius couldn't just march in and take the city. So that night, he somehow managed to sleep and had a dream. He was in a small boat crossing a river, but he couldn't see the ferryman's face. When they reached the other side, he saw that the ferryman was himself. He took this as a sign from Dumat. So at this time, the other kingdoms had severed contact with the Vinter because they refused to recognize a non-mage on the throne. Well, Derenius decided to send gifts to Tarsian, saying he wanted to speak with him about mending the relations between their nations. Tarsian was flattered. He invited Derenius to his palace in Minrathus, and Derenius brought with him only an honor guard. Once inside, Derenius cast a spell to seal everyone inside the palace. No one could escape. That's pretty damn powerful, I think. Well, then he challenged his uncle Tarsian to a duel, and won. He then put the broken signet ring back together, proving his claim to the throne, and uniting to Vinter and Neromenian under a single high king. Then Derenius set about negotiating with the dwarves. Tevinter knew they would have a hard time conquering them, and even if they did, maintaining control would be more difficult than it was worth. So instead, Derenius took a small honor guard into the deep roads to find some dwarves, then offered himself hostage. It took weeks, but they eventually made it to Kelsharak, the then capital of the Dwarven Empire. He was not granted an audience with the king, but instead was made to fight in the Proving, to see what the Dwarven ancestors thought of him. He kicked ass, obviously, until the final opponent, who wore powerful armor and wielded a giant hammer apparently made from pure lyrium. This fight allegedly went on for hours, until the opponent called a halt to the battle and revealed he was King Endrin Stonehammer himself, not to be confused with King Endrin Idukin of the Dragon Age. The king claimed Derenius had the voice of the ancestors, and negotiations proceeded. Together, they forged a strong trade agreement, and Derenius returned home with many gifts. Within a few years, his army was outfitted with dwarven weapons and armor and a ton of lyrium to booster spells. In Carinus, not to be confused with Canari, in case anyone was confused by that, which nobody was, High Queen Rathana knew there was absolutely no way she could beat Tevinter in combat, so she proposed marriage. Derenius accepted, and the three kingdoms were finally united under a single ruler, who took the title of Archon, and formally founded the Tevinter Imperium. And that's about it for Derenius. Now, a lot of that is most likely highly fictionalized in world, but it's still a great story, and I imagine it's the commonly accepted belief, at least by people in Tevinter, so it's good to know heading into DAD. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and like, and remember, 
Tala Nadas.